Good morning, brethren, sisters in the Church of the Living God. This is an unexpected video, um, <laughs> but this is a video that must be made today. <laughs> Get your authorized version of the scriptures, commonly called the King James Version. And turn with me in the authorized version of the scriptures to Ezekiel chapter 7. We want verses 23 on to the close of the chapter. Ezekiel chapter 7, verses 23 on to verse 27. You there? Follow me along in the scriptures, please. Make a change. For the land is full of bloody crimes, and the city is full of violence. Wherefore I will bring the worst of the heathen, the worst of the heathen. Oh, that would be the Jesuit order. And they shall possess their houses. I will also make the pomp of the strong to cease, and their holy places shall be defiled. The inevitable destruction of Roman Catholicism after the Church of the Living God has been redeemed, resurrected, caught up. It's coming. Destruction coming. And they shall seek peace. And there shall be none. Mischief shall come upon mischief. And rumor shall be upon rumor. Then shall they seek a vision from of the prophet... But the law shall perish from the priest, and counsel from the ancients. Verse 26 I was going to share with some of the brethren as the verse of the day. Uh, but the Lord's like, no, I know why now. <laughs> the king shall mourn, and the princes shall be clothed with desolation, and the hands of the people of the land shall be troubled. I will do unto them after their way... And according to their deserts will I judge them, and they shall know that I am the Lord. As I have been telling many of you over and over and over <laughs> that President Kamala Harris and her wicked front man, Smoking Joe, they are here, they are ordained of God for judgment upon this nation of America. They absolutely are, and we're going to be going through. <laughs> we're going to be going through this uh, visited uh, video by the um, by the facade president, smoking joke, and um, this this is just unbelievable. This is absolutely unbelievable. Uh, I want to share with you. Um, we got a bunch more scriptures we're going to be going through here today as we go through this video. But I want to share something with you that a dearly, dearly beloved sister sent on to me. And sister, if you can find this in not a picture, because you can't put pictures in the comments section, please find it and I'll pin it in the comment section. Okay? Thank you. Ten Stages of Genocide. This was sent on to me by a dearly, dearly beloved sister. Here are the ten stages of genocide. Number one, classification. People are divided into, uh, on, into us and them. Number two, symbolization. People are forced to identify themselves. Vaxxed or unvaxxed. Demokami or Republican. <laughs> discrimination. People begin to face systematic discrimination. Dehumanization. I don't approve of that term, but dehumanization. People equated with animals, vermin, or diseases. And thankfully, because of Charles Darwin and uh, the satanic religion of evolution. Um, yes, people like to refer to man as mammals. This um, channel here on YouTube called the Behavioral Panel 
which are these four blokes um, doing uh, body language analysis on certain peoples and whatnot. It's entertaining, but there's two of them. This one guy named Chase and this other guy named um, Adam Hartwood. Ugh. Sorry, brother. <laughs> but uh, those two guys have military backgrounds. Uh, I would not be surprised at all to find out that those two were Jesuits. Okay? But those two guys specifically, I bring them up. Why? Because they like to refer to us as mammals. That's evolution for you. The one bald-headed guy, um, uh, Adam Hartley, I believe his name is, a uh, guy who teaches uh, interrogation, <laughs> um, he even refers to us as the... Um, uh, not the creature, but um, the organism. Okay, you'll you'll catch him saying things like that. There's the product of your satanic evolution there for you. Uh, number five, organization. The government creates specific groups, police, military, to enforce the policies, like contact tracers. Polarization. The government broadcasts propaganda to turn the populace against the group. <laughs> Remember her six polarization. The government broadcasts propaganda to turn the populace against the group. Preparation. Official action to remove, relocate people. Oh, like in the green zones, the concentration camps here in America. Persecution. Beginning of murders. Theft of property. Trial massacres. Oh, like the Inquisition. What is it? The Office of the Holy Doctrine... Um, the Office of the Holy Doctrine, I believe it's called. Someone correct me if I'm wrong, I think I am, about the uh, Office of the Inquisition, which was never disbanded, but is just euphemized, what is that? Euphemistic language, changing the name of a condition, and hence you change the condition. Euphemistic language, that's what Je uh, Jesuits excel at, okay? Extermination. Wholesale elimination of the group. It is extermination and not murder because the people are not considered human. And remember, unto the Jesuit, unto the Catholic, to kill a heretic is not to kill a man because uh, that's God's will that you kill the heretic. Ten. Denial. The government denies that it has committed any crime. Yeah. 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 Remember that. I'm going to leave this. I'm, I'm looking at it on my fancy schmancy cell phone. Keep that in mind. I may just end up put, uh, pasting, uh, putting this in the comment in the uh, description box. But sister, there again, if you can find this uh, stages of genocide in like a... Um, something that can be linked or something like that instead of a picture that would be great but now let me let me ask you a question is uh, Kamala Harris and smoking Joe are they traitors to America some of you might be like amen yes they're traitors to America really if they were chosen by the American people which they were not Okay? It was a selection, not an election. Okay? Our leaders were selected for us by the Jesuits as allowed by God for judgment upon this nation. Your vote meant nothing. Okay? And to be quite honest, I do believe that Trump did win the election as far as people actually voting. But see, your vote didn't count, people. Why? Because of the Trading of the Enemy Act. Your, our Constitution means nothing. Because of the trading, uh, 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 trading with the Enemy Act by Roosevelt in the uh, early 30s sometime. I get the date wrong. But because of that, 
we have been under executive power of the Pope, <coughs> excuse me, the President, who has the power at his will for the common good to circumvent the Constitution. Okay? Why do you think you see flags with gold fringe around them? Because we're in a state of emergency. Obama talked about um, overriding it, getting away, away with the uh, state of emergency, but it was never rescinded. Ever since Roosevelt, the Trading with the Enemy Act, we have been under executive power. What executive power? By a dictator, the President of the United States. More so rather, Arturo Sosa, the Black Pope. Very, very similar to Smoking Joe. Never mind Francis, okay? He's, he's a puppet. He's a, he's a showman. He's a, he's a good old boy. He's a Jesuit himself, subservient unto the head of the Jesuit order, Arturo Sosa, the leader of Catholicism the most powerful and deadliest man on earth, okay? Here in America, Smoking Joe, he's just, he's the good old boy. He's the front man for Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris is who the Jesuits want. And think about this. I, I've seen, in this video, in this very video we're going to watch, look in the comments about, the, they talk about getting rid of Smoking Joe or stepping down people. That's what the Jesuits want. The Jesuits want to elevate Kamala Harris, the president. She is already the president, just not officially yet. People, look, even you Democommies out there, you got to, please, think about this. That wicked, that wicked witch, President Kamala Harris, when she is officially set up as president, you think that's going to be better? Oh, but because of the feminazism here in America, a lot of even you men, even you men think, yeah, let a woman come in to do what a man can't. Uh, children are your oppressors and women rule over you? Um, people, you search the scriptures. Uh, God does not want a woman ruler. You take that up with the Lord. A woman is not supposed to usurp authority over a man. Those of you who say, well, that's for the church buildings. Ah, shut up. No, that's in a general sense. Okay? Because of the fall. Adam is to rule over Eve, and she is, her desire is to be towards her husband. Okay? Because of the fall. All right? That's not feminism. That's scripture. Okay? Uh, but yes, there were uh, women rulers uh, talked about in scripture. Um, Esther was not a ruler. Okay? She was subservient onto uh, Artaxerxes. Or Ahasuerus. Excuse me. Excuse me. And um, Ruth, she wasn't a ruler. Ath Athaliah, she ruled a little while in Jerusalem. Yeah? Look what happened to her. And of course, Jezebel, she done got uh, trodden down upon by horses and her blood done splattered on the wall. Okay? Jezebel, a type of the Roman Catholic Church. Okay? People, once they get Smoking Joe out of there, Kamala Harris is the president, which they wanted all along. The vice president is going to be Nancy Pelosi. America is done for, people. I know that there are actually brethren out there, uh, so-called brethren, <laughs> uh, who believe that God is not done with America. I wish that were the truth. I wish that was the truth. I don't buy it for one second. Turn to Obadiah. Turn to the book of Obadiah. Is Smoking Joe and Kamala Harris traitors? If they had been elected and part to the Constitution, yes, they would have been considered traitors to America. But see, you got to remember something, people. These people, come on, I've proven. Uh, praise the Lord. The Lord allowed me, excuse me, to prove 
to you that Kamala Harris is a Jesuit working with the Jesuit order. Look on the look on the videos, uh, uh, tactics of devils. Okay, please look. It's obvious she is working for the Jesuit order. She is the one that they want as president. Okay, and Smoking Joe, he's playing the fool so he can get himself out of there. If they had been truly elected by the countrymen of America, then yes, you could consider Smoking Joe and Kamala Harris traitors. But see, they were not elected, you fools. My, my dear beloved countrymen, your vote didn't matter. Because if votes mattered, most likely Trump would have been in office. And hey, all you Democrats, hey, it would have been pretty much the same thing with the Republican Trump in office as well. Why is that? Because America is run by the Jesuit order. So, Obadiah chapter, uh, excuse me, Obadiah, verses 10 on to verse 16. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. In the day that thou stoodest on the other side, in the day that the strangers carried away captive his forces, strangers, he just would order, carried our forces captive, how? By the steel of the Jesuit poniard and fighting the wars of the Vatican overseas. Yeah. And foreigners entered into his gates and cast lots upon Jerusalem. Even thou wast as one of them. How the Jesuits invaded America and taken over America in a very short time. But thou shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother in the day that he became a stranger. Neither shouldest thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction. Neither shouldest thou have spoken proudly in the day of distress. As Smoking Joe is doing, and even so Kamala Harris. Thou shouldest not have entered into the gate of my people in the day of their calamity. Yea, thou shouldest not have looked on their affliction in the day of their calamity, nor have laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. These people in our government, thanks to the Jesuit order, they're just pulling in the doe me people. This psychological operation has nothing to do with health. It has to do with depopulation, fear, genocide, depopulation, yes, and control. Neither shouldest thou have stood in the crossway to cut off those of his that did escape. You're going to see Smoking Joe make a comment about how his patience is running out. Uh, if anyone's long suffering is running out, that would be our Lord. Oh, you, my countrymen, you need to wake up fast. And those of you, my countrymen, who rightfully so speak against the steel of the Jesuit Punyard, you're doing it outside of Jesus Christ. That's vanity. It's vanity of vanity, saith the preacher. All is vanity. You trying to do what's right and exposing all this and fight it, you're doing it without Jesus Christ? Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Verse, 15, uh, verse 14 again. Neither shouldest thou have stood in the crossway to cut off those of his that did escape. Neither shouldest thou have delivered up those of his that did remain in the day of distress. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. Is not America a heathen nation? I.e. a Christian nation? Obama said America is not a Christian nation. Oh, I beg to differ, Mr. Obama. Yes, they are. America is a Christian nation. Why do I say that? Because Catholics are Christian. Jes uh, America is a Jesuit nation. 
ever since world uh, since the Civil War, even before that, the Jesuits have been taking over this nation, and now they are fully in control of this nation, people. Neither shouldest thou have delivered up those of his that did remain in the day of distress. Verse 15. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thine own head. For as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall all the heathen drink continually. Yea, they shall drink and they shall swallow down, and they shall be as though they had not been. Now see where we started in verse 10, thy brother Jacob. Now remember, we're reading these for instruction in righteousness. Kamala Harris and Smoking Joe, they are work people. People, listen. Okay. The Illuminati was created by the Jesuits. Okay, Adam Weissop. Okay, he was a Jesuit. The Illuminati was created by the Jesuits. The Freemasons are controlled by the Jesuits uh, by the Jesuit order. Okay. Okay. The Illuminati, the Freemasons, all in the hands of the Jesuits. Okay. Smoking Joe, Kamala Harris, they do not work for America. They do not work for the people. They work for Arturo Sosa, the Black Pope the head of all of Roman Catholicism, the Vatican. That's who those two work for. It would be no different if Republican Trump had still been in office. Okay? He himself is a 33rd degree Freemason. Okay? It's a no-win situation for America. The only hope you have is to be saved of our Lord Jesus Christ. What's coming? What's coming? Now, I do beg your pardon, brethren, sisters, church of the living God, and even you, my enemies. I apologize to you. But we are going to go through this entire video here, and I apologize in advance for the offensive uh, rhetoric and disgusting dialect of the presidential facade smoking joke. And to you outside my nation, I do beg your pardon. Prepare yourselves. Now reporting, David Muir. Good afternoon, and we're coming on the air at this hour because President Biden is expected to unveil his strategy for this next chapter in this fight against the COVID surge sweeping across the U.S. The Delta variant now killing more than 1,000 Americans every day. thousand Americans every day. Uh, number six in the ten stages of genocide. The government broadcasts propaganda to turn the populace against the group. What group is that? The church and living God. Those who are truly saved, born again, converted, new creatures in Christ Jesus. And also that other, that group are those who refuse to steal of the Jesuit Panyu. The president will be revealing his six-point plan from the White House, focusing, we believe, on... Six points! <laughs> no coincidence there. ...on increasing vaccinations, a talk of boosters, of course, schools, and the economy. He's expected to sign an executive order requiring the majority of federal employees in this country and government contractors to be vaccinated now without that option of testing, meaning vaccines, they need the vaccination in order to work, federal work. Except those of his own people, the, like his own cabinet and whatnot, his own, his own people, her own people, they're exempt. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like it is in Australia, no jab, no job. Workers in companies with 100 or more employees, it's believed, will also have to ensure that workers are vaccinated or tested weekly. All of this comes as the U.S. now averages more than 140,000 new COVID cases a day. And we've been reporting on this number here, more than one in cases, a positive test result. 
what is it, the PCR test that could be uh, modified, right? From um, what, what, between 25 and 40, 25 you'll get a, a negative, anywhere above that you'll get a definite positive. Manipulating the outcome? Yeah. Four new cases involves children, just as millions now head back to school. The surge in this country pushing hospitals to the brink, more than 101,000 patients hospitalized, almost all of them, authorities pointing out, unvaccinated. We have reported in the last 24 hours. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. And the 10 stages of genocide, uh, verse, uh, verse, excuse me. Number one, people are divided into us and them, classification. And also, number three, people begin to face systematic discrimination. Never mind the uh, facts about those who um, are dying because of the steal of the Jesuit Panyard. Yeah. Yeah. Remember, you can totally trust the Jesuit-controlled news media. Yeah. Yeah. Here's here some medical facilities at the brink in Idaho now rationing health care. Here's the president. Good evening, my fellow Americans. I want to talk to you about where we are in the battle against COVID-19, the progress we've made and the work we have left to do. And it starts with understanding this. Even as the Delta variant 19 has COVID-19 has been hitting this country hard, we have Delta variant. Isn't it um, a dearly, dearly beloved sister also sent me some information about the 5G network is also being labeled Delta. Interesting. And also, as I become aware, there is this Delta THC. Why bring that up, Brad? Um, the young kids are taking these uh, Delta THC, which is not, uh, uh, Delta 8 THC, which uh, is giving young people heart problems. Young kids, you know, teenagers, 20 year olds, youngins, who ought to have perfectly good health, <laughs> Lord willing. So, Delta. So, there's Delta 8 THC, the Delta thing with the um, 5G. And the Delta variant. Oh, I'm sure that's just a coincidence, right? <clears throat> yeah. We have the tools to combat the virus. If we can come together as a country and use those tools. Oh, like everybody coming under the headship of Rome! And see that in the background? You, you, you see that? You see on our flag there? You see that? That's the symbol of Ra, okay? Ra, the Egyptian sun god, okay? Right there, that's the, that's the symbol of Ra, okay? And if you look, I don't have a dollar bill, but if you look on our American dollar, the Eye of Horus and the Seal of Solomon, the Star of Remphan, the uh, Star of Freemasonry, the male and the female with the G in the middle, Gender activity. Come on, people. If we raise our vaccination rate, protect ourselves and others with masking, expanded testing, and identify people who are infected. Who are the ones who are affected? Affected. Or infected, I should say. Oh, if you breathe, if you walk, if you talk, if you blink, if you cough, if you have an itch on your foot or on your buttocks. Those are all side signs of the poison crown. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And the masking thing. I can't go into my bank anymore because uh, they won't let you in unless you wear a face mask. One of those paper ones. Because the lady, when I went in there, it's like, okay, and I did, I asked her, it's like, okay, what if I just took my shirt and went like that, huh? Can I do my transaction? She's like, nope got to wear a mask. It's like, one of those? Like, yes. I'm like, so if someone were to come in from the outside 
with a cloth mask like no you got to wear one of these one of those masks that have those little parasites in there for you to breathe in yeah so of course I you know it's like okay so I walked out let's see why why does my bank here where I go to where I bank why do they want you to specifically wear one of those masks and not like doing something like this or wearing a cloth mask why specifically the uh, hospital type mask because those have because those have the loose little parasites in there that you breathe in an agenda an agenda see it's not just that if someone were to wear you know like you see outside and by the way I'm not telling you to wear a mask of course not never never say for you to wear a mask never ever I'd be a hypocrite no but see I did that at the bank because they are specific they want you to wear those little surgical looking uh, masks instead of a cloth or a rag or anything you gotta wear a surgical mask that has those little parasites in them this government people is a terror to good works we can and we will turn the tide on COVID-19. It'll take a lot of hard work. It's going to take some time. Many of us are frustrated with the nearly 80 million Americans who are still not vaccinated, even though the vaccine is safe, effective, and free. <laughs> Double. Just lie to your face, people. Yeah, how do they define safe and effective? Safe. It has the same um, actions as the placebo. Effective. That it produces antibodies or something like that. And free, yeah. They're giving them away. But yet, uh, my wife who uh, could use the, a uh, colonoscopy, because people don't have insurance, because we don't have insurance, we can't get one of those, but they sure will give you the uh, uh, poison crown steal of the Jesuit poniard for nothing. Yeah, the dead cost nothing, right? Yeah. You might be confused about what is true, what is false about COVID-19. So before I outline the new steps to fight COVID-19 that I'm going to be announcing tonight, let me give you some clear information about where we stand. First, we have we've made considerable progress in battling COVID-19. When I became president, about 2 million Americans were fully vaccinated. Today, over 175 million Americans have that protection. Before I... That's roughly just a bit over half of our population. And according to that uh, Diego uh, website, um, by 2025, about half of our population is going to be gone. I took office, we hadn't ordered enough vaccine for every American. Just weeks in office, we did. The week before I took office on January 20th of this year, over 25,000 Americans died that week from COVID-19. Last week, that grim weekly toll was down 70%. And then three months before I took office, our economy was faltering, creating just 50,000 jobs a month. We're now averaging 700,000 new jobs a month in the past. Yeah, but what's the catch? Here in Illinois, where I live, um, every place that my wife and I go to, all the employees, <laughs> okay, all of them. And in, uh, by his, um, his uh, Nazi uh, dictate there about uh, um, companies that have over 100 employees, it's now going to be mandatory that everybody take the steel of the Jesuit Ponyard. That includes your Walmart. Uh, that includes most of your grocery stores, okay? Yeah. 
three months. This progress is real. But while America is much better shape than it was seven months ago when I took office, I need to tell you a second fact. We're in the tough stretch and it could last for a while. Highly contagious Delta variant that I began to warn America about back in July spread late summer like it did in other countries before us. While the vaccines provide strong protection for the vaccinated, we read about and hear about and we see the stories of hospitalized people, people on their deathbeds, among the unvaccinated over the past few weeks. Among the unvaccinated, right? <laughs> ah, number one, in stages of genocide, people are div divided into us and them. Number three, people begin to face systematic discrimination. Okay? <laughs> and five and six, the government creates specific groups, police, military, to enforce the policy. Six, the government broadcasts propaganda to turn the populace against the group. This is a pandemic of the unvaccinated. And it's caused by the fact that despite America having unprecedented and successful vaccination program, despite the fact that for almost five months, free vaccines have been available in 80,000 different locations, we still have nearly 80 million Americans who have failed to get the shot. And to make matters worse, there are elected officials actively working to undermine the fight against COVID-19 Instead of encouraging people to get vaccinated and mask up, they're ordering mobile morgues for the unvaccinated dying from COVID in their communities. This is totally unacceptable. Third, if you wonder how all this adds up, here's the math. The vast majority of Americans are doing the right thing. Nearly three quarters of the eligible have gotten at least one shot but one quarter has not gotten any. That's nearly 80 million Americans not vaccinated. And a country as large as ours, that's 25% minority. That 25% can cause a lot of damage, and they are. The unvaccinated <laughs> wow. overcrowd our hospital. Wow. Did you people hear that? The 25%, the minority can do a lot of damage. Yeah, just like the Jesuits who you serve. And look, my American countrymen, you Demokamis out there, you did not elect this man. Okay, the Jesuits elected, selected Kamala Harris. Do you think this guy is a... Oh, wow. Wow. Are overrunning emergency rooms and intensive care units, leaving no room for someone with a heart attack or pancreatitis or cancer. And fourth, oh, oh, because all those are caused by what? The poison crown, ain't they? Yeah. I want to emphasize that the vaccines provide very strong protection from severe illness from COVID-19. I know there's a lot of confusion and misinformation. But the world's leading scientists confirm that Jesuits. if you are fully vaccinated, your risk of severe illness from COVID-19 is very low. In fact, based on available data from the summer, only one out of every 160,000 fully vaccinated Americans was hospitalized for COVID per day. Hey, now that might be true. What about all the other things that are in the uh, steel of the Jesuit poniard? Hmm? Like graphene oxide, that kind of stuff? Yeah. These are the facts. So here's where we stand. The path ahead, even with the Delta variant, is not nearly as bad as last winter. But what makes it incredibly more frustrating is we have the tools to combat COVID-19 and a distinct minority of Americans, supported by a distinct minority of elected officials, 
are keeping us from turning the corner. These pandemic politics, as I refer to, are, are, make, are making people sick. <laughs> oh, people are divided into us and them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the government broadcasts propaganda to turn the populace against the group. <laughs> uh, official action to remove, relocate people. <laughs> Causing unvaccinated people to die. We cannot allow these actions to stand in the way of protecting the large majority of Americans who have done their part and want to get back to life as normal. <laughs> as your president, I'm announcing tonight a new plan to require more Americans to be vaccinated to combat those blocking me. public health. My plan also increases testing, protects our economy, and will make our kids safer in school. It consists of six broad areas of action and many specific measures in each that in each of those actions you can read more about in whitehouse.gov, whitehouse.gov. The measures, these are going to take time to have full impact. But if we implement them, I believe and the scientists indicate that the months ahead we can reduce the number of unvaccinated Americans decrease hospitalizations and deaths, and allow our children to go to school safely and keep our economy strong by keeping businesses open. First, we must increase vaccinations among the unvaccinated with new vaccination requirements. Of the nearly 80 million eligible Americans who have not gotten vaccinated, many said they were waiting for approval from the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, well, last month, the FDA granted that approval. So, the time for waiting is over. This summer, we made progress through the combination of vaccine requirements and incentives, as well as the FDA approval. Four million more people got their first shot in August than they did in July. But we need to do more. This is not about freedom or personal choice. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, people, hello, people. <laughs> First Kings, Chapter Twenty One. Verses 25 and 26. First Kings chapter 21, verses 25 and 26. But there was none like unto, but there was none like unto Ahab, which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord, whom Jezebel his wife stirred up. Ahab, a wicked king, Jezebel his wife, who was a, a daughter of the, a priest of Baal. Okay. Jezebel is a type of the Roman Catholic Church. Ahab, a wicked ruler. Ahab. The Vatican. Jezebel. Also, Kamala Harris. Verse 26. And he did very abominably in following idols, like Arturo Sosa and Mary. He's a Catholic, by the way. Okay? According to all things that the Amorites, whom the Lord cast out, uh, out before the children of Israel. Now, if you were to continue reading, just so you know, in 1 Kings chapter 21 from 25 on to verse 29, you see that King Ahab, upon hearing the words of the Lord, he, will, he puts a sackcloth on and does kind of a repentance. And the Lord grants him a little mercy, even though you, if you were to continue reading in 1 Kings, um, he works deception, tries to pull the uh, wool over the eyes of the Lord, and then he gets killed. King Ahab is in hell. Okay? King Ahab is in hell. King Ahab, one of the worst kings in the history of Israel, at least repented a little to get uh, shoe mercy on the nation while he was in charge a little bit, even though he himself is in hell. You think Smoking Joe and Kamala Harris will ever do that? No. Why? Because they work for the Vatican, people! 
Wake up! It's about protecting yourself and those around you. The people you work with. The people you care about. The people you... So, he's pulling the... He's pulling the it's the Christian thing to do uh, uh, angle on taking the steel of the Jesuit Punyard. Okay? Because you care for your neighbor. So, because I'm going... Because I'm to love my neighbor as myself... I am to do for them what I would never do for myself. You see how satanic and Jesuitical this really is, people? You love. My job as president is to protect all Americans. So tonight, Except the unvaccinated. I'm the Department of Labor is developing an emergency rule to require all employers with 100 or more employees that together employ over 80 million workers to ensure their workforces are fully vaccinated. Or That makes me wonder, when he says 100 or more, now think about this people, think about the uh, rhetoric and dialect that he is using. The, now, for example, here in Woodstock, we have a, um, a Taco Bell, okay? That Taco Bell here in Woodstock, I doubt has 100 employees um, on the payroll at that specific Taco Bell. But the company Taco Bell in a whole has over 100 employees. So does he mean that per business, like the little hole in the wall Taco Bell here in Woodstock that has well under 100 employees on the payroll? Or does he mean Taco Bell in the entirety of it, who, which does entirety have over 100 employees? What does he mean by that? Or show a negative test at least once a week. Some of the biggest companies are already requiring this. United Airlines. Disney, Tyson's Food, and even Fox News. The bottom line. <laughs> Fox News, yeah. Yeah, Mr. Tucker. Yeah, and all those people at Fox News. Yeah. Yeah, going along with the mandates. Yeah. You know, if you can't see this, it's because you don't want to. That's all there is to it. Ignorance to the truth at this time, dear people, I don't believe could be used as an excuse. This is what you want. The priests bear rule by their means. And my people love to have it so. And what will you do in the end now? We're going to protect vaccinated workers from unvaccinated co-workers. We're going to reduce the spread of COVID-19 by increasing the share of the workforce that is vaccinated in businesses all across America. My plan will extend the vaccination requirements that I previously issued in the healthcare field. Already, I've announced, we'll be requiring vaccinations at all nursing home workers who treat patients on Medicare and Medicaid because I have that federal authority. Tonight I'm using... <laughs> yeah, 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 you mean uh, that ex-cathedra? <laughs> hey, babe, it's a good reason why the Lord kept us from getting uh, uh, Medicare and Medicaid for yourself. <laughs> In that Sorry, same authority to expand that to cover those who work in hospitals, home health care facilities, or other medical facilities. A total of 17 million health care workers. If you're seeking care at a health facility, you should be able to know that the people treating you are vaccinated. Simple, straightforward, period. Next, I will sign an executive order that will now require all executive branch federal employees to be vaccinated. All. And I've signed another example. Except those who are right in your little clique. 
executive order that will require federal contractors to do the same. If you want to work with the federal government and do business with us, get vaccinated. If you want to do business with the federal government, vaccinate your workforce. You want to buy or sell? Get the mark of the beast. This is what this uh, this is all. That's what this is all preparing you for, you people. And tonight, I'm removing one of the last remaining obstacles that make it difficult for you to get vaccinated. The Department of Labor will require employers with 100 or more workers to give those workers paid time off to get vaccinated. No one should lose pay in order to get vaccinated or take a loved one to get vaccinated. Today, in total, the vaccine requirements in my plan will affect about 100 million Americans, two-thirds of all workers. And for other sectors, I issue this appeal to those of you running large entertainment venues, from sports arenas to concert venues to movie theaters, Please require folks to get vaccinated or show a negative test as a condition of entry. And to the nation's family physicians, pediatricians, GPs, general practitioners, you're the most trusted medical voice to your patients. You may be the one person who can get someone to change their mind about being vaccinated. Tonight, I'm asking each of you to reach out to your unvaccinated patients over the next two weeks and make a personal appeal to them to get the shot. America needs your personal involvement in this critical effort. My message to unvaccinated Americans is this. What more is there to wait for? What more do you need to see? We've made vaccinations free, safe, and convenient. The vaccine is FDA approval. Over 200 million Americans have gotten at least one shot. We've been patient, but our patience is wearing thin, and your refusal has cost all of us. So please do the right thing, but just don't take it from me. Me, listen to the voices of unvaccinated Americans who are lying in hospital beds, taking their final breath, saying, "If only I'd gotten vaccinated." If only. It's a tragedy. Please don't let it become yours. The second piece of my plan is continuing to protect the vaccinated. For the vast majority of you who have gotten vaccinated, I understand your anger at those who haven't gotten vaccinated. I understand the anxiety about getting a breakthrough case. But as the science makes clear, if you're fully vaccinated, you're highly protected from severe illness, even if you get COVID-19. In fact, recent data indicates there is only one confirmed positive case per 5,000 fully vaccinated Americans per day. You're as safe as possible, and we're doing everything we can to keep it that way, keep it that way, keep you safe. That's where boosters come in. The shots that give you even more protection than after your second shot. Now, I know there's been some confusion about boosters, so let me be clear. Last month, our top government doctors announced an initial plan for booster shots for vaccinated Americans. They believe that the booster is likely to provide the highest level of protection yet. Of course, the decision of which booster shots to give, when to start them, and who will give them, will be left completely to the scientists at the FDA and the Centers for Disease Control. In other words, in the hands of the Jesuits. But while we wait, We've done our part. We bought enough boosters, enough booster shots, and the distribution system is ready to administer. As soon as they are authorized, those eligible will be able to get a booster right away in tens of thousands of sites across the, sites across the country. 
for most Americans at your nearby drugstore and for free. The third piece of my plan is keeping, and maybe the most important, is keeping our children safe and our schools open. For any parent, it doesn't matter how low the risk of any illness or accident is when it comes to your child or grandchild. Trust me, I know. So, let me speak to you directly. Let me speak to you directly to help ease some of your worries. It comes down to two separate categories. Children ages 12 and older who are eligible for a vaccine now, and children ages 11 and under who are not yet eligible. The safest thing for your child 12 and older is to get them vaccinated. They get vaccinated for a lot of things. That's it, get them vaccinated. As of the adults, almost all... So kill your children. Because you, you love your neighbor. Sacrifice your children to the Vatican. All the serious COVID-19 cases we're seeing among adolescents are in unvaccinated 12 to 17 year olds, an age group that lags behind in vaccination rates. So parents, please get your teenager vaccinated. What about children under the age of 12 who can't get vaccinated yet? Well, the best way for a parent to protect their child under the age of 12 starts at home. Every parent, every teen sibling, every caregiver around them should be vaccinated. Children have four times higher chance of getting hospitalized if they live in a state with low vaccination rates rather than states with high vaccination rates. Now, if you people are divided into us and them classification. If you're a parent of a young child. You're wondering when will it be? When will it be the vaccine available for them? I strongly support independent scientific review for vaccine uses for children under 12. We can't take shortcuts for that scientific work. But I've made it clear I will do everything within my power to support the FDA with any resource it needs to continue to do this as safely and as quickly as possible. And our nation's top doctors are committed to keeping the public at large updated on the process so parents can plan. Now to the schools. We know that if schools follow the science and implement the safety measures like testing, masking, Adequate ventilation systems would be provided the money for, social distancing, and vaccinations, and children can be safe from COVID-19 in schools. Today, about 90% of school staff and teachers are vaccinated. We should get that to 100%. My administration has already acquired teachers at the schools run by the Defense Department because I have the authority as president of the federal system, the Defense Department, in the Interior Department to get vaccinated. That's the authority I possess. Tonight I'm announcing that we require all of nearly 300,000 educators in the federal HEP paid program, Head Start program, must be vaccinated as well to protect your youngest, our youngest, most precious Americans, and give parents the comfort. And tonight I'm calling on all governors to require vaccination for all teachers and staff. Some already have done so. We need more to step up. Vaccination requirements in schools are nothing new. They work. They're overwhelmingly supported by educators and their unions. And all school officials trying to do the right thing by our children. I'll always be on your side. Let me be blunt. My plan also takes on elected officials and states that are undermining you in these life-saving actions. Right now, local school officials are trying to keep children safe in a pandemic while their governor picks a fight with them and even threatens their salaries or their jobs. Talk about bullying in schools. If 
<laughs> what about bullying at the upper echelons of our government? Yeah. Yeah. They'll not help. These governors won't help us beat the pain. I'm sorry to subject you to this, brethren, and even you, my enemies. I, I, seriously, even the people who hate me the most, I, I'm sorry, but we, we gotta hear the horse speak. So. Pandemic. I'll use my power as president to get them out of the way. The Department of Education is already... How is he gonna get them out of the way? Poison, poison cup, the leaden of the bullet, the steel of the Jesuit poniard, huh? We've <laughs> begun to take legal action against states undermining protection that local school officials have ordered. Any teacher or school official. First and foremost, people, you should not have your children in public schools. Here is the textbook for your children, the authorized version of the scriptures, okay? Why are your children in school? Why? Why? Uh, so they can get murdered like from these Jesuit monsters? Whose pay is with hell for doing the right thing. We will have that pay restored by the federal government 100%. I promise you. I will have your back. The fourth piece of my plan I bet that makes you is increasing good. testing and masking. From the start, America has failed to do enough COVID-19 testing. In order to better detect and control the Delta variant, I'm taking steps tonight to make testing more available, more... Testing. They take a Q-tip about yay big and they jam it up your nose to break the mucous membrane and put that stuff in there, okay? They guess what? Guess what? Guess what? Those even in the sealed containers under a microscope, the little squiggly parasites are on those things, okay? Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know what? I'd rather die than have one of those things. Absolutely. Absolutely. More affordable and more convenient. I'll use the Defense Production Act to increase production of rapid tests, including those that you can use at home. While that production is ramping up, my administration has worked with top retailers like Walmart, Amazon, and Kroger. And tonight, we're announcing that no later than next week, each of these outlets will start to sell at-home rapid test kits at cost for the next three months. This immediate price reduction for at-home test kits for up to 35% reduction. We'll also expand, expand free testing at 10,000 pharmacies around the country. And we'll commit, we're committing $2 billion to purchase nearly 300 million rapid tests for distribution to community health centers food banks, schools, so that every American, no matter their income, can access free and convenient tests. This is important to everyone, particularly for a parent or a child with a child not old enough to be vaccinated. You'll be able to test them at home and test those around them. In addition to testing, we know masking helps stop the spread of COVID-19. That's why when I came into office, I required masks for all federal buildings, on, on federal lands, on airlines, and other modes of transportation. Today, tonight, I'm announcing that the Transportation Safety Administration, the TSA, will double the fines on travelers that refuse to mask. If you break the rules, be prepared to pay. And by the way, show some respect. The anger you see on television toward flight attendants and others doing their job is wrong. It's ugly. The fifth piece of my plan is protecting our economic recovery. Because of our vaccination program, 
and the American Rescue Plan, which we passed thoroughly in my administration. We've had record job creation for a new administration. Economic growth unmatched in 40 years. We cannot let unvaccinated do this progress, undo it, turn it back. So tonight, I'm announcing the additional steps to strengthen our economic recovery. We'll be expanding COVID-19 economic injury disaster loan programs. That's a program that's going to allow small businesses to borrow up to $2 million from the current 500,000 to keep going if COVID-19 impacts on their sales. These low interest long-term loans require no repayment for two years and be can use to hire and retain workers, purchase inventory, or even pay down higher cost debt racked up since the pandemic began. I'll also be taking additional steps to help small businesses stay afloat during the pandemic. Sixth, we're gonna to continue to improve the care of those who do get COVID-19. In early July, I announced the deployment of surge response teams. These are teams comprised of experts from the Department of Health and Human Services, the CDC, the Defense Department, and the Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA. To and where was that here in uh, the stages of genocide? Uh, number five, the government creates specific groups, police, military, to enforce the policies. Right, right, right. And uh, number seven, official action to remove, relocate people like they're doing in Australia right now. The areas in the country that need help to stem the spread of COVID-19. Since then, the federal government has deployed nearly 1,000 staff, including doctors, nurses, paramedics, into 18 states. Today, I'm announcing that the Defense Department will double the number of military health teams that they'll deploy to help their fellow Americans in hospitals around the country. Additionally, we're increasing the availability of new medicines recommended by real doctors, not conspiracy, conspiracy theorists. The monoclonal antibody treatments have been shown to reduce the risk of hospitalization. Oh, meaning uh, the witch doctors of the pharmaceutical company. That's what he's talking about. So what he's talking about is someone who, um, you know, conspiracy theorist, a conspiracy factualist, thank you, uh, those who want to go through natural remedy, not the pharmacaea industry. Yeah. Up to 70% for unvaccinated people at risk of developing severe, severe disease. We've already distributed 1.4 million courses of these treatments to save lives, and reduce the strain on hospitals. Tonight, I'm announcing we will increase the average pace of shipment across the country of free monoclonal antibody treatments by another 50%. Before I close, let me say this. Communities of color are disproportionately impacted by this virus. <laughs> really, 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 really. Now, see, this is another thing that he's doing here. He's uh, the race card, as they like to call it. Okay? They're playing the race card thing. And the actual truth is uh, there is no real hard evidence that suggests that people of a darker skin color are more prone to get this fictitious um, psychological operation thing. Yeah. Funny that he does this. And as we continue to battle COVID-19, we will ensure that equity continues to be at the center of our response. We'll ensure that everyone is reached. My first responsibility as president is to protect the American people and make sure we have enough vaccine for every American, including enough boosters for every American who's approved to get one. We also know this virus transcends borders. That's why even as we execute this plan at home, we need to continue fighting the virus overseas. 
continue to be the arsenal of vaccines. We're proud to have donated nearly 140 million vaccines over 90 countries, more than all other countries combined, including Europe, China, and Russia combined. That's American leadership on a global stage. And that's just the beginning. Yeah. We've also now started to ship another 500 million COVID vaccines, Pfizer vaccines, purchased to donate to 100 lower income countries in need of vaccines. And I'll be announcing additional steps to help the rest of the world later this month. As I recently released uh, the key parts of my pandemic preparedness plan so that America isn't caught flat footed with a new pandemic comes again, as it will. Next month, I'm also going to release the plan in greater detail. So let me close with this. We have so we've made so much progress during the past seven months of this pandemic. The recent increases in vaccinations in August already are having an impact in some states where case counts are dropping in recent days. Even so, we, we remain at a critical moment, a critical time. We have the tools. Now we just have to finish the job with truth, with science, with confidence. And together, as one nation, look, we're the United States of America. There's nothing, not a single thing we're unable to do if we do it together. So let's stay together. God bless you all and all those who continue to serve on the front lines of this pandemic. And may God protect our troops. Get vaccinated. Stop, stop, stop. Notice how uh, there's nothing we can't do when we all come together. Uh, you know, that sounds really familiar, but uh, who said that? Go to the book of Genesis. Go to the book of Genesis. Okay, Genesis chapter 6. Ah, uh, let's see. Uh, where they were building the Tower of Babel. Oh no, that's 11, excuse me. Genesis chapter 11. Excuse me. Genesis chapter 11. Verses 1 on to verse 9. And the, beg, beg your beg your pardon, brethren. Hold on, uh, let, I can't, I can't. Yeah, I have to, I have to excuse me. There. Yes, get this out of here. There we go. Beg your pardon, brethren. Bear with me for one moment. There we go. <laughs> there we go. There we go. That's better. Don't want to be looking at smoking joke. Okay, Genesis chapter 11, verses 1 on to verse 9. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. See, when everybody gets together, they want to build towers to make a name for themselves. When everybody, contrary to scripture, because God is a God of distinction, of separation. When everybody gets together, we as fallen man, we want to make ourselves towers to reach on the heavens, uh, to the heavens. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil, see. And they said, verse 4, And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven, and let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower, which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. That's the testimony of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, on what happens when man gets together and starts building towers to make of them make themselves a name. 
looks like nothing that we've imagined will be restrained from us. Think of the genetically modified organisms in food. Look at the uh, steel of the Jesuit Bunyard. Look at two designer babies, eugenics. Yeah. Bring everybody together and this is what we do. Go to, let us go down and there confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered abroad, scattered them abroad thence upon the face of all the earth and they left off to build the city. Scattered. God is a God of distinction, separation. Why? Because when man, all men, get together, this is what we do. And this is exactly what that man of sin, the son of perdition, through his church, Roman Catholicism, and her army, the Jesuit order, that is exactly what they want to do. Bring everybody together so they can be as gods. Therefore is the name of it called Babel. Because the Lord did there confound the languages of all the earth. And from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. Separation. You stay over there. You stay here. You stay there. I'm staying right here. Separation. Distinction. Go to Ezekiel. Back to Ezekiel. Chapter 14. Ezekiel chapter 14. We will be reading verses 12 on to verse 23. Ezekiel chapter 14, verses 12 on to verse 23. Kamala Harris and Smoking Joe, they have been ordained of God to bring judgment upon this wicked nation of America. Okay? America is gone. Okay? America as a nation is gone. Most of the people here in America are falling for this. And the ones who are not falling for it still don't want to bring Jesus Christ, God our Father, into the equation. Why? Because of the Christians in the church buildings. Because of Roman Catholicism. Because of what is Christian, not that which is of the church and living God. Ezekiel chapter 14, verses 12 under verse 23. The word of the Lord came again to me, saying, Son of man, when the land sinneth against me by trespassing grievously, America, then will I stretch out mine hand upon it, and will break the staff of bread thereof, and will break the staff of the bread thereof. Ooh, a famine? You don't say. And will send famine upon it, coming, and will cut off man and beast from it. Though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, they should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness, saith the Lord God. If I cause noisome beasts, to pass through the land and they spoil it so that it be desolate that no man may have passed through because of the beasts noisome beasts are not these people making a lot of noise about the steel of the Jesuit poniard and the poison crown psychological operation created and instituted by the Jesuit order beasts uh, evolutionists which these people are the religion of evolution um, survival of the fittest, that kind of stuff. Um, we're, we're mammals. We evolved from monkeys according to these people. Yeah. Though these three men were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters. They only shall be delivered. But the land shall be desolate. So if these three men... Noah, Daniel, and Job were in the land at that time. 
only they would deliver themselves. Or only they would be delivered. Why? Because the nation was so far gone. Hold your place here and go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 15. Jeremiah chapter 15. Verses 1 on to verse 7. Then said the Lord unto me, Though Moses and Samuel stood before me, yet my mind could not be toward this people. Cast them out of my sight and let them go forth. How can the mind of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, be upon a nation that, number one, rejects him, that engages in murder of children every single day with the Funvax VMAT2 inhibitors within the steel of the Jesuit Punyard, altering people's brains? How can God's mind be toward this nation of America? The only way that God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, has any mercy upon this nation is because of the church of the living God. We, the body of Christ. That's it. We, the church of the living God. We, who need to be out there passing out tracts, doing whatever it is the Lord has called you on to, in whatever capacity that is in. And that doesn't matter in what nation you is in. Okay? It doesn't matter. You're to keep doing until the Lord says no more or come up hither. Okay? Verse 2. And it shall come to pass, if they say unto thee, Whither shall we go forth? Get a load of this. Get a load of this finality from our Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father. Then thou shalt tell them, Thus saith the Lord, such as are for death to death, and such as are for the sword to the sword, and such as are for the famine to the famine, and such as are for the captivity to the captivity. No mercy in those words, is there? Why? Why is that? Because this nation, especially in this time, at this time in the book of Jeremiah, his own people betrayed him, turned against him, with none of him. America is against the Lord, wants nothing to do with him. Look at that verse, the finality there. Verse 3, And I will appoint over them four kinds, saith the Lord, the sword to slay, steel of the Jesuit Panya, <laughs> the dogs to tear, and the fowls of the heaven, and the beasts of the earth to devour and destroy. And I will cause them to be removed into all kingdoms of the earth because of Manasseh, the son of Hezekiah, king of Judah, for that which he did in Jerusalem. For who shall have pity upon thee, O Jerusalem? Or who shall bemoan thee? Or who shall go aside to ask, How thou doest? Thou hast forsaken me, saith the Lord. Thou art gone backward. Therefore will I stretch out my hand against thee, and destroy thee. I am weary with repenting. Wow. Get a load of that. That plays to the finality of verse 2. God's long suffering is almost over with. God's long suffering will end when the church of the living God is redeemed, caught up, resurrected. And I will fan them with a fan in the gates of the land. I will bereave them of children. I will destroy my people since they return not from their ways. Go back to Ezekiel. Picking up at verse 17. Or if I bring a sword upon the land, that land and say, Sword, go through the land, so that I cut off man and beast from it. Though these three men were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters, but they only shall be delivered themselves. Or if I send a pestilence into that land, or pour out my fury upon it in blood, to cut off from it man and beast, though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, 
as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither son nor daughter. They shall but deliver their own souls by their righteousness. For thus saith the Lord God, how much more when I send my four sword judgments upon Jerusalem, the sword and the famine and the noisome beast and the pestilence to cut off from it man and beast? Yet behold, now here's mercy. Here's a little mercy. Yet behold, there shall therein shall be left a remnant that shall be brought forth. Both sons and daughters, behold, they shall come forth unto you. And ye shall see their way and their doings. And ye shall be con comforted concerning the evil that I have brought upon Jerusalem, even concerning all that I have brought upon it. And they shall comfort you when ye see their ways and their doings. And ye shall know that I have not done without cause all that I have done in it, saith the Lord God. America is a nation against God that commits murder every single day with abortions in the millions, at least, I would imagine. There's no hope for America, people. Your only hope is to get saved of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because the Jesuits are in place to bring judgment against this ungodly nation. My nation, America, is wicked. And then you have fine people such as Phil Robinson telling you that America can come back. He's a little crazy in his head. Eating too much of that duck meat. Go to Second Chronicles. It, uh, you notice here where it said about Manasseh? Uh, where did it say that? That he was... Uh, but note, remember how it, it had mentioned about for what Manasseh had done? That this judgment was being brought upon the nation here in the book of Ezekiel? Go to Second Chronicles. Go to 2 Chronicles, chapter 32. Now, King Manasseh, as we're going to see, was one of the most wicked kings in the history of all Israel. Probably a little bit more wicked than even King Ahab. Let's read about King Manasseh. Now, we're not going to read this whole chapter, but if you were to read... The entirety of uh, Second Chronicles chapter 32, or uh, excuse me, of Second Chronicles chapter 33. Excuse me. Beg your pardon, brethren. Beg your pardon. Second Chronicles chapter 33, not 32. Okay. Second Chronicles chapter 33. If you were to read that entire chapter, you would see that King Hezekiah came to repentance because he was broken. Okay? And he repented and got right with the Lord. But even though King Manasseh got right with the Lord, that still did not absolve the consequences of his actions upon his own people. Because he is king, what he did affected the people. And his heresies and his evil and wickedness, even though he, he himself got right with the Lord and is saved and is in heaven right now, because of what he did, it affected the people. Priests bear rule by their means, and my people love to have it so. Let's read a little bit uh, about Manasseh before his repentance. Now, we're not going to read about his repentance because who in our government can repent? On a personal level, hopefully someone within the government uh, will get saved of our Lord Jesus Christ. But I can guarantee you, most of uh, the people in our government are working hand and foot for the Vatican, for the Jesuit Order especially our president, Kamala Harris, and her facade spokesperson, Smoking Joe. Second Chronicles chapter 33, verses 1 under verse 10. Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 50 and 5 years in Jerusalem, but did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, like unto the abominations of the heathen, whom the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. 
For he built again the high places which Hezekiah his father had broken down. And he reared up altars for Baalim, and made groves, and worshipped all the host of heaven, and served them. Also he built altars in the house of the Lord, whereof the Lord had said, In Jerusalem shall my name be forever. And he built altars for all the hosts of heaven in the two courts of the house of the Lord. And he caused his children to pass through the fire in the valley of the son of Hinnom. And he observed times and used enchantments and used witchcraft and dealt with a familiar spirit and with wizards. He wrought much evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. Look at those things in verse 6. Okay? Observe times. Chant, enchantments, witchcrafts, familiar spirits, wizards. Do you not see that depicted in Hollywood upon the television screen? Video games. And he set a carved image, the idol which he had made in the house of God, of which God had said to David and to Solomon his son, in this house and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen before all the tribes of Israel, will I put my name forever. Neither will I any more remove the foot of Israel from out of the land which I have appointed for your fathers, so that they will take heed to do all that I have commanded them, according to the whole law and the statutes and the ordinances by the hand of Moses. So Manasseh made Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to err, and to do worse than the heathen whom the Lord had destroyed before the children of Israel. And the Lord spake to Manasseh and to his people, but they would not hearken. Number one in the stages of genocide. People are divided into us and them. Now, we saw in Ezekiel 14, where he said unto Jerusalem, though Noah Daniel and Job were in it. My mind couldn't be for this people. And we also saw elsewhere in uh, Jeremiah 15, verse 1, though Moses and Samuel stood before me. What does that mean? Go to Jeremiah again. Jeremiah chapter 7. Jeremiah chapter 7. Jeremiah chapter 7, verses 8 under verse 16. There comes a point when a nation will get so far gone that the only hope and mercy our Lord can have for that nation is to destroy it. You look in the Old Testament about how God went through and killed, uh, wiped out total nations, killing man, woman, and child. Why? Why? to have uh, mercy on others because of their wickedness because those peoples those nations had gone past a point of no return now in the Sermon on the Mount we'll touch on that we're told to love our enemies and pray for our enemies today in this dispensation how do you love your enemy by telling them the truth and praying that they may be broken but then again there are those who will go past a point of no return where they have chosen to serve Satan. Not that the Lord cannot save them, but they will go past the point of no return. The only thing you can pray for those people is, Lord, may your righteous judgment be upon them. Okay? But we're going to get more to that a little bit in uh, Matthew chapter 5. But let's read, read this first. Daniel chapter... Uh, Daniel. Jeremiah chapter 7, verses 8 to verse 16. Here's America. Behold, ye trust in lying words that cannot profit. Will ye steal, murder, and commit adultery, and swear falsely, and burn incense unto Baal, unto Baal, and walk after other gods whom ye know not? And come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and say, We are delivered to do all these abominations? Oh, you're free to go and sin because don't worry, God's grace covers it all. Yeah. 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 
And then it says in verse 9, Will you steal, murder, and commit adultery, and swear falsely, and burn incense unto Baal, and walk after other gods whom ye know not? Like the gods of the CDC? Huh? Yeah? Is this house which is called by my name become a den of robbers in your eyes? Behold, even I have seen it, saith the Lord. And think about these Christians who say, it's your Christian duty to take the steel of the Jesuit Panier. Yeah. Oh, sure. It's a Christian thing to do. Absolutely. It's not what anyone of the Church of the Living God would do. Anyone who is truly saved, born again, converted, a new creature in Christ Jesus, would never, ever support or be behind the steel of the Jesuit Panier. There ain't no way. There ain't no way. These Christians in the buildings, the Christians in the buildings, the ones that you run into the most, they ain't saved. They're not of the Church of the Living God. Remember, Catholics are Christians. And Catholicism is Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, Satan's church. Okay? Comprende? Huh? Let's, let's continue. But go ye now unto my place which was in Shiloh, where I set my name at the first, and see what I did to it for the wickedness of my people Israel. All things that were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. And now because ye have done all these works, saith the Lord, and I spake unto you rising up early and speaking, but ye heard not, and I called you, but ye answered not. Therefore will I do this, therefore will I do unto this house, which is called by my name, wherein ye trust, and unto the place which I gave to you and to your fathers, as I have done in Shiloh. God does not dwell in um, buildings made with hands. If you are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, God dwells within you, our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, you know, the Holy Ghost. The Lord is that spirit. If you are saved, born again, converted, the Lord Jesus Christ dwells within you. He's the Holy Ghost. He is also our Father. One God, spirit, soul, and body. The, the circumcision made without hands is our Lord Jesus Christ living within you. Okay? God does not dwell in temples made with hands. And I will cast you out of my sight. As I have cast out all your brethren, even the whole seed of Ephraim. Therefore, pray not thou for this people, neither lift up cry nor prayer for them, neither make intercession to me, for I will not hear thee. I'm going to link in this video, um, if I remember, well, I got it written down here. Um, perf a video called Perfect Hatred and Love Your Enemies. It's a two-part video. I'll put them in the description box of this video. Okay? But he says, don't pray for this people. Why? Because at this time, that this generation of people that was facing God's judgment was far gone. We're far gone. There's a part in the book of Jeremiah where the elders, the rulers, did according to the scriptures and let their Hebrew servants go. Like, the, like it was like commanded in the law. But see, they reneged and took them back, proving that their minds were gone. That no matter what they did, their minds could not be well in doing the law of the Lord. Especially with the steel of the um, Jesuit Punyard, with that uh, BMAT2 in inhibitors, mRNA, graphene oxide and all that nice stuff that they have in the steel of the Jesuit Punyard. And you got these charismatics, Catholics, who tell you there's going to be a big revival. They're lying to you. Your only hope is to get saved by our Lord Jesus Christ. But see, there's a condition to that, dear friend. You have to be broken of your self-righteousness. 
You have to have sorrow for your sins that you have committed against God because it's his fault that he went and died on the cross. And godly sorrow contrition will produce in you godly fear if you come to him on his terms broken and contrite. And in the fear of the Lord, you will call upon his name and may he save you. All you out there truthers who are bravo speaking out against this, you're doing it outside of Jesus Christ. You're fighting in vain. You're fighting in vain, dear friend. Okay? You are fighting in vain. Jeremiah chapter 11. Jeremiah chapter 11, verses 11 under verse 17. Now remember, here what we're looking at is for our instruction in righteousness, doctrinally, dispensationally, specifically for the Jews. But you have to remember the mindset of America in a whole. Okay? Smoking Joe himself said that 25% are doing the damage of that 25%. The small number are those who are of the church of the living God. And these other people who don't want to get saved, but yet fighting, but outside of Jesus Christ. Okay? America on the whole, the majority, is gone, brethren, people. There's no coming back. There's no coming back. What you and I as the church of the living God, you my countrymen, do as the Lord would have you to do. Be a daily witness of, uh, by how you walk, adhering your life to the scriptures. Pass out tracts. Uh, go to Fellowship Track League. Really good tracks they got. Fellowship Track League. Okay? Write things. Make your own tracks. Stand out on a corner. Do whatever you got to do. Whatever the Lord will have you to do. The door ain't closed yet, people. And don't compromise. Don't worry for the heart. Okay? And of course, no one in the Church of the Living God, I am convinced, would knowingly receive the steel of the Jesuit punishment. No truly saved, born again, converted man, woman, or child of the church of the living God would knowingly do that. There's no way. I don't believe it. Is there a possibility that they could? Uh, we've talked about that before. I don't believe so. Who knows with how man gets. Jeremiah 11, verses 11 on to verse 17. Therefore thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring evil upon them, which they shall not be able to escape. And though they shall cry unto me, I will not hearken unto them. You Americans, my countrymen, you have been warned for, for years. But what did you do? Because of the Jesuits come in. The Jesuits tell you what is Christian. They give you Bibles, not the scripture. They tell you God loves you. When you as a lost person, you see like, why does a, why would a loving God who loves me unconditionally send me to hell? You have been evil affected because of religion. The religion of the Vatican. And brethren, people, most of America is gone and the, the whole outweighs the majority, obviously. Verse 12. Then shall the cities of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem go and cry unto the gods unto whom they offer incense, but they shall not save them at all in the time of their trouble. Catholicism isn't going to save you. The, the Jesus of Catholicism is Satan. He's definitely not going to save you. Mary, Semiramis, the Queen of Heaven, Diana of the of the Ephesians, boop. She couldn't even save a dead fly. Neither get saved. For according to the number of thy cities were thy gods, O Judah, and according to the number of the streets of Jerusalem 
have ye set up altars to that shameful thing, even altars to burn incense unto Baal. Therefore, pray not thou for this people, neither lift up a cry or prayer for them. For I will not hear them in the time that they cry unto me for their trouble. Where are we reading to? Verse 17. What hath my beloved to do in mine house, seeing she hath wrought lewdness with many, and the holy flesh hath pa is passed from thee? When thou doest evil, then thou rejoicest. When they do evil, they rejoice. Transgenderism, sodomy, abortion. The Lord called thy name a green olive tree, fair, and of goodly fruit, with the noise of a great tumult, he hath kindled fire upon it, and the branches of it are broken. For the Lord of hosts that planted thee hath pronounced evil against thee, for the evil of the house of Israel and of the house of Judah, which they have done against themselves to provoke me to anger in offering incense unto Baal. Keep this in mind. This is what he did unto his own people, the apple of his eye, which we, the church of the living God, are grafted into their tree. Okay? You think America is going to skate, uh, skate by with these nonsensical dictates that Kamala Harris through Smoking Joe is coming up with? You know, the Jesuit order given her? You say, well, we're supposed to love our enemies. We're supposed to pray for our government that we may live a peaceable and quiet life. Yes, we are to pray for our rulers, yes. But what happens when those rulers are a terror to good works and are against God? He said, God, people, 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 listen, look at me, listen to me, okay? Smoking Joe is not of the church of the living God. He's a Catholic. Kamala Harris works for the Jesuit order. She is a Catholic. Catholics are not saved. They're Christians. They're not of the church of the living God. Get that through your thick head. Okay? There's a difference between what is Christian and what is of the church of the living God. Look, look, look outside your window and your door, buddy. You'll see a lot of Christian. What about the church of the living God that adheres to the scriptures? They're not saved. The God smoking Joe is talking about is Satan. You need to wake up, people. You need to wake up. But people will say, well, sooner on the mount. Sermon on the Mount. I love the Sermon on the Mount. Sermon on the Mount is beautiful, truthful, for a different dispensation. What do you what do you mean dispensation? Study to shew thyself approved unto God, that thou be as the workman who needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Kind of Brad eyes that. Second Timothy two, fifteen. Okay? Rightly dividing the word of truth. Being dispensational. Again, the whole book is written for you, but it's not all written to you. There are seven dispensations within Scripture. And you need to rightly divide them. And a lot of the heresy that comes today is people like these uh, hyper-dispensationalist, uh, easy-believism devils who claim they're dispensational, but they're not dispensational. They say it's faith alone from Genesis to Revelation. Uh, they're not dispensational, okay? Steve Anderson, new, uh, new, uh, new IFB, they're non-dispensational. Everything is for us, doctrinally. Bloop. No, no. Sermon on the Mount, verses 43 under verse 48, chapter 5, Matthew 5, verses 43 under verse 48. You read the Sermon on the Mount, you will see faith mentioned one time, and it's in a form of a rebuke. You do not see anything in the Sermon on the Mount, any reference 
of the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Blood atonement. You see nothing of it of any kind in the Sermon on the Mount. Why? Why? Because it is the Constitution, the way it's going to be in the Kingdom of Heaven. What is the Kingdom of Heaven? The Kingdom of Heaven, which only appears in the book of Matthew over 40 times, okay, is Jerusalem, where Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, is going to rule and reign from Jerusalem as King over all the earth for a thousand years. Okay? That is the kingdom of heaven. And in that time, the law is going to be there, and it's going to be works. Why? Because you're going to be able to see God himself sitting on the throne. You will not need faith during the kingdom of heaven. That's why, on, in the Sermon on the Mount, that's why, on the sermon, in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 5, on to Matthew chapter 8. That's why you see faith mentioned only one time and it's fashioned in this form of re rebuke. It's all works in the Sermon on the Mount. Why? Because it's for the kingdom of heaven. This is before the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? The New Testament begins, dear friend, with the death of the testator. Hebrews chapter 9. Okay? That's when the New Testament officially begins. Okay? With his death. Okay? He died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Shed his blood on the cross to make atonement for sins. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4. Okay? Okay? With his ascension, ascension, he went up to heaven, okay? In Acts. Okay? But with his death, burial, and resurrection, brought in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles. Okay? Sermon on the Mount is not for us. It's for the kingdom of heaven. God, our Father, our Lord, listen to me people, listen to me. God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ is going to be on the earth ruling and reigning from Jerusalem when the Sermon on the Mount, the doctrine of the Sermon of the Mount will be applicable. And the kingdom of heaven comes after the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? So, Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 under verse 48. Instruction in righteousness. Yes. How we ought to live, how we ought to behave today. Instruction in righteousness. How to be righteous. Yes. Doctrinally. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. 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 Catholics. Catholics love the Sermon on the Mount. Catholics will tell you that the Sermon on the Mount is doctrine for today. Because Catholics, Catholicism, is seeking to build the Son of Perdition's kingdom. And that kingdom will be built and established after we, the Church of the Living God, are caught up. That the Being caught up is erroneously referred to as the pre-tribulation rapture which you will not find in scripture by the way. But Matthew chapter 5 verses 43 on to verse 48 Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thyself. But I say unto you Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Now, how do we love our enemies? By telling them the truth of Scripture. Telling them that unless they repent of their self-righteousness and come to the Lord broken and having godly sorrow, which lost people can have, okay? And in fear, call upon the name of the Lord, and may He save you. But see, you love your enemies today by telling them the truth of Scripture. You want to you want to truly hate your enemy? Don't say nothing. Let them go on. Let them run for the edge of that cliff. Beg your pardon. Let them run for the edge of that cliff. 
you knowing that it's a, a, qui a swift <laughs> drop off and they'll fall to their death. You want to hate your enemy? Be silent. Want to love your enemy? Tell them the truth. How do you bless them? By giving them truth. How do you pray for them? That they might be broken and come to the Lord that he may save them. Or that his righteous judgment be upon them. How do you do good to them? Again, telling them the truth. The truth of Scripture. Verse 45. That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his Son, S-U-N, to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Be ye therefore perfect, not sinlessly, in heart. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. And your Father which is in heaven is perfect, sinless, yes. But the perfect right there is being perfect in heart. Having your heart given on to the Lord through brokenness and contrition. Now, for our instruction in righteousness, yes. But doctrinally, this is for a different dispensation. This is for the kingdom of heaven. Doctrinally, this does not apply. For our instruction in righteousness, absolutely. Doctrinally, this does not apply for us today. And besides, all of that, our government is a terror to good works. They call evil good and good evil. Our government goes against the scriptures. That constitution that you see up there, okay? means nothing because of the trading with the enemy act inst instituted by Roosevelt executive orders you heard smoking Joe say it himself and you also got to remember this go to Luke chapter 22 Luke chapter 22 he told his people in Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 under verse 48, to love their enemies in that fashion because he as king is going to be on the earth. And the enemies of our Lord during the kingdom of heaven, they're going to have to deal with God personally in the flesh on the throne. They're going to have a lot, of, they're going to have bigger fish to fry. Okay? Okay? You understand? That's why he said that in Matthew chapter 5, verses 43, under verse 48. Because he himself is going to be on the throne in Jerusalem, reigning as king. So we, who are in the kingdom of heaven, yes, we are to adhere to that for doctrine during the kingdom of heaven. Why? Because the enemies of the Lord are going to deal with him personally. But see, I want to draw your attention to Luke chapter 22, verses 35 on to verse 38. Luke 22, verses 35 on to verse 38. And he said unto them, When I sent you without purse and scrap, scrap, and shoes, lacked ye anything? And they said nothing. Then said he unto them, But now, but now, why but now? But now he that hath a purse, let him take it. And likewise his scrap. And he that hath no sword, let him sell his garments and buy one. See, he talked about in the Sermon on the Mount, turn the other cheek, and if he hits you, then turn the other cheek and let him hit you. Okay, why? Because God himself, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, as King, will be again ruling on the earth as lawgiver, as King. 
he'll punish those people during the kingdom of heaven. Okay? But now, in verse 36, he's about to go to the cross to die, bury, and rise again the third day according to the scriptures and shed his blood on the cross for the remission of sins. What does that mean? The dispensation is about to change. Okay? That's why he says, but now, now, but now, he that hath a purse, let him take it. And likewise his scrip. And he that hath no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. For I say unto you, that this that is written must yet be accomplished in me. And he was reckoned among the transgressors. Isaiah chapter 53. For the things concerning me have an end. And they said, Lord, behold, here are two swords. And he said unto them, it is enough. The dispensation was about to change. He was about to die, bury, and rise again the third day according to the scriptures. He was going to pay the atonement for sins in his blood on the cross. Okay? The Jews as a nation rejected the kingdom of heaven. Prophesied to do so. Now he was going to the cross. The opportunity for the Jews to receive the kingdom of heaven had passed. A new dispensation. A new dispensation. Go to John chapter 17. John chapter 17. The true Lord's Prayer. Okay? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That's a Jewish prayer for Jews. Okay? He said it to Jews. This... John chapter 17 is the Lord's prayer. His actual prayer. Okay? John chapter 17. Verses 7 on to verse 10. Uh, yeah. Verses 7 on to verse 10. Read the whole chapter on your own time. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me. And they have received them. And they have received them. And have known surely that I came out from thee. And they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them, those who are of his own. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. Look at that verse. Don't look at me. Look at that verse. He said, I'm not praying for the world. These Christians will John 3, 16 and 17 you to death. God loves you. He's not mad at you. He says right there, I pray not for the world, the world and those who are in the world. He prays for who? I pray for. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. He prays for his own, his church, body of Christ. I know where it says in Timothy, you know, where he says we are to pray for our government. Yes, yes. Let's let's find that really quick, shall we? Ah, let's see. Where is that? Ah, uh, First uh, Timothy chapter two, verses one under verse six. I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions. And giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority. Amen. Why? Why? That we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness, separation, and honesty. Are the dictates of the Jesuit order through Kamala Harris and her front person, Smoking Joe, are they allowing us of the Church of the Living God to live in all godliness and honesty? 
when they're come when they're what classification people are divided into us and them hmm. uh, number seven preparation official action to remove and relocate people For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have, Mr. Calvinist, all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. I don't see anything about the co there, Catholic. Who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time, So yes, we are to pray for our kings and rulers and stuff like that. Why? That we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For what end? So we can preach the gospel and get the word of our Lord Jesus Christ out. Because remember, we are ambassadors for Christ. We have the ministry of reconciliation. We have the word of reconciliation. The door ain't closed now, is it? No. But what are we facing? What are we facing? 2 Timothy chapter 3. Verses 1. On to verse 7. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. We are in the last days before the catching way, by the way. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Unholy, not separate. Mingling themselves with that. Without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, can't hold water. Fierce, despisers of those that are good. Traitors, heady, high-minded. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. How many of you out there have gotten a steal of the Jesuit Punyard so you can go eat your donut, so you can go in and get your pizza? Having a form of godliness like the Christians, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lusts. And no marvel, Satan himself is transformed as an angel of light, and his ministers as ministers of righteousness, those who creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins. You read in Genesis chapter 3, who did Satan go to? He went to Eve. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. And look at verse 12 and verse 13. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Verses 10 on to verse 12. And with all the deceivableness of unrighteousness and them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Like the poison crown psychological operation. That the steel of the Jesuit poniard is safe and effective. <laughs> yeah. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. How can God's mind be toward this nation of America. 
The only hope would be if America in a whole, as a nation, would come to a repentance and seek God in mourning and fasting and weeping and sackcloth and ashes. But the more that our Lord allows the affliction to come upon America, the farther people away get, showing you that we are in the end times. People, this government is controlled by the Jesuit order, and these people who are in government do not care about you. They want to kill you. They are a terror to good works. They serve the Vatican. You never elected anybody, my countrymen. Your vote meant nothing. The tyranny that's happening to our brethren in Australia is coming here. Maybe not on the scale, but it's coming here. And all you people out there who are doing what we as the Church of the Living God need to be doing more so of fighting this tyranny and exposing it. You're doing it outside of the truth of the scriptures and of our Lord Jesus Christ. Their counsel comes not. It's going to be it for this video. This was a video I had to do. Don't know how long it will be up. Uh, YouTube really every four days likes to apparently as I understand it every four days um, YouTube will take away a hundred to a hundred and fifty views off of one of the videos on this channel uh, as I've been informed of it uh, I've noticed it myself uh, it's every four days the videos that the Lord gives me to do to put out here uh, within four days time uh, they'll get to a certain number and then without fail thus far YouTube will take away 120 to 150 views per video it's getting really old but anyway that's going to be it for this video brethren people please consider what I tell you please consider these warnings from the scriptures time's almost up Once we go, Church of the Living God, you're going to be left with the Catholics. Thank you, all you brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God, for your help, for your prayers. Pray for our brethren in Australia. They really need our prayers. Pray for us. Pray for a brother in New Hampshire who's having sleeping issues. Pray for a sister who needs protection that she may be a witness unto her mother. Pray for a brother, a friend, who needs guidance. Pray for the babes who are the ones who are going to be duped by these Christians. Pray for them. Love them. And we will see you in the next video. Lord willing.